welcome back. In this week's Wine Wednesday, we're taking you inside a new state-of-the-art facility in the Dundee Hills dedicated to custom crush winemaking. And it could be a game changer for small production wineries in the Willamette Valley. Vinovate Custom Wine Services broke ground late last year with plans to be up and running in time for the 2023 harvest. I met winemaker Brian Weil at the construction site to take a first look inside. We're standing in what's going to become this custom crush facility. So what exactly is this building going to do? We're going to produce some wines for really small family owned wineries that don't really have an actual physical winery. They own vineyards, they may have tasting rooms, but they need a space to make their wines in, um, in this beautiful custom crush facility that we're building right now. I think sometimes, uh, you know, people picture a vineyard and the estate and a tasting room, but there's a lot that goes in behind the scenes to make the wine. And, and that can be a lot for a company that's either trying to get started or, or is a small family run winery. So what does this mean for some of these smaller brands to have access to a facility like this in wine country? You know, building a winery this scale and at this high end of quality is very capital intensive. So I think what you'll see for the most part is smaller brands that make two, 3,000 cases may not have that uh, ability to produce the wines in this type of facility on their own estate. So what we do is we feel it's a really great sustainability model because not only are we doing a couple of small brands, we're doing more like six or eight small brands in the same facility because Everybody needs a press, everybody needs a sorting line, they need tanks, they need chillers, all these things that this single facility can produce wines for these eight clients that would have had to do that by themselves on their own estate. So we're able to do it at a very high end quality for all the equipment. We're able to staff it with some really um, great expertise in the winemaking staff and just uh, and do it well with you know the sustainability model. We can add solar panels to the roof. We have rainwater collection. A lot of things that maybe smaller producers may not be able to do all at once. Yeah, and with that sustainability mindset, as you look to the future, does that really kind of set the tone for a lot of Oregon's industry and, and, and what you feel like winemakers are trying to do out here? Yeah, and I you know I've worked in a lot of different regions throughout the world, but growing up in Oregon, I'm a little biased, but I think we really have, put our mark on sustainability and really acted on that pretty heavily here in Oregon in you know, the last 50 plus years of this commercial wine growing um, and winemaking here in Oregon. So to me, um, a lot of people do look at Oregon for that sustainability model and it's really kind of spread throughout the industries in the U.S. and outside of the U.S. So um, we're regenerative organic on the 40 acre vineyard here that we planted. So it's kind of a next level of organics because we really feel, you know, well, we're doing this for our children for the next generations. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the vineyard and because there aren't walls up yet on this facility, I can look right out and I can see all these vines that you just planted. So that's going to be grapes uh, available for, for folks who want to just come in and, and really start from ground zero making wine, right? You got it. So we have places that have their own vineyards, that have their own tasting rooms, but I also have certain clients that don't have any of that yeah. and want to start brand new. And so in three years, once these vineyards uh, start to get some fruit on them, we'll have 40 acres available for our clients. And uh, we don't plan on, at this point, doing a Vinovate brand. So uh, it's just going to be long-term stability here at this Custom Crush for our clients and then the ability to you know, give them fruit so they can use for their own brands. Ultimately, what do you think this does for Oregon's wine industry to have access for all these different types of clients at, at all different points in their winemaking careers? Yeah, I think, you know, having this dedicated space for small lot fermentations is it's been done a little bit, but I think what you see in Oregon is a lot of these wineries that have their own larger brands will make a couple clients wines just to, you know, help with overhead, to help a friend out, whatever it may be. But to have this large of a facility with these small two ton, three ton, four ton tanks, it's just not something we've really seen done a lot in Oregon yet. It's been done very, you know, large scales in Napa and Sonoma areas, but not as much here. So we wanted to bring some of that modeling up to, to Oregon so we can help out clients, not only for still wine, but we also, a big part of this winemaking will be sparkling wine. So the method Champenois traditional sparkling wine, which has only uh, been done by a few people here in Oregon. It's going to be a really, really exciting place when it is all said and done and looking forward to great things for the future of Oregon wine. We're very excited about it and um, can't wait to have the grand opening in September. Thanks so much, Brian. Thank you. So they are ready and hoping to handle about eight different wineries. Brian's already working with Ambar Vineyards. They helped found Vinovate. Some other really renowned wineries have signed on. They're working with Knudsen Wines, Rain Dance Vineyards, Bellinger Estates. And as you mentioned, they've got that 40 acres planted that will eventually be fruit for other winemakers, an additional fruit source. 
Lots of cool stuff happening yeah, it's, there. Yeah, it is cool. I like the idea, too. I, it's one of those things, um, I should say, like sectors of winemaking that I, I wouldn't be aware of, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, oh, you know, because a production is smaller than this other production, they need this type of resource. Right. And they need it geographically to be in this place. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, it's fascinating. It's you fascinating You know, the other story. thing I asked Brian, I was like, what are you going to do when, I mean, harvest time is crunch time enough. What are mm -hmm. you going to do when eight wineries <laughs> all have their grapes ready for you? And they're actually building, one of the things um, in that facility is a big fruit storage room. So basically oh. a giant refrigerator. So if if you have grapes come in and you're not ready to crush just yet, they'll be okay to sit there in some cold storage. Interesting. And, and not compromise the integrity of the fruit, you know, before you go crush. But uh, he said they've got a dedicated full-time staff. Winemakers bring their fruit in, tell mm -hmm. them what they want to do, and they do the rest. So oh. it's at this point, he said, it's not a matter of how how fast we can crush and, and barrel. It's how fast they can pick and bring the fruit into us. Really? So. Oh, fascinating.